Hello my friends on Instagram and YouTube. Hi everybody. Let me set up my stream and we will be off to go. Seeing as most of you guys won't even know that I'm live, uh, that's okay. Uh, hi everybody on TikTok. Today we are going to be just drawing some doodles. Uh, if you guys have any questions you guys want me to answer, please let me know. I'm starting the YouTube scratch right now, so you guys can let me know if you guys have questions there. All right. So, da da da. Hi everyone. My name is Rod Gun. If you guys do not know about me, I am an artist, a designer, cartoonist, cartoon, um, editor, book, author, teacher, whatever you guys want to call me. And today we're going to draw. Where did I put my glove? Anyways, we don't need gloves. We don't need gloves here. Um, so what I like to do first is I like to talk about the last thing that I taught. And, you know, in case you guys are curious about things that we go about, we did this the last stream. Our last stream was the 100 hand challenge. So we drew hands and I was explaining how to draw hands and how to start visualizing them so that you don't have to be restrained by just drawing things like boxes or cylinders. By learning the way that I teach, you guys can learn how to draw hands very easily. A little bit more of a complex side, but you guys can actually learn how to draw hands from memory very, very quickly. No references were used for any of these. Uh, actually, no, we used our hand. Because we all have hands. Unless you don't have hands, and then I'm sorry. Um, but you have probably beautiful feet that you draw with. Uh, before that, we drew 100 faces. And we talked about face structures and different face shapes and styles and how you can start seeing shapes and styles differently. And then we just drew a bunch of things. This one took four hours to do. Okay, so that one was like, that one took forever. Uh, but normal day-to-day -day streams are just a page of just doing something and talking about a topic. In this case, we were talking about composition, and we were talking about things like that. This one was facial expressions, I believe, and we were just, we just go about that like that. Shoulders, hands, blah, 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 blah. Today, what should we draw today? Earlier today, I was having a conversation with, uh, with an apprentice of mine. And we were just uh, talking about how he needed to visualize things differently so i was explaining to him like the process of seeing things as three-dimensional shapes as opposed to trying to see something with style seeing something as a base as a base form like a dummy like a doll having your base shapes and structure means that you can take this structure and apply that to a lot of different styles, right? That is going to be like something very important that's gonna eventually come in your career. You're going to be in 10, 20 years down the line and you're going to be like, oh shit, do I really, how do I draw the mouth? How do I draw, the, ah, why is it hard to draw this still after so long? Why is it so hard to draw mouths? Why is it so hard to draw ears? Why is it so hard to draw noses? I've been drawing forever. Why is it so hard? Well, that was a topic that we were talking about. And it really does come down to if you have trouble with positioning of body shapes, is because you don't understand the concept of dividing a character into 3D shapes and splitting them and understanding that shapes are basic shapes basic shapes are consisting of what we draw right we draw faces we draw heads we draw eyes all those are spheres and then we draw noses and stuff like that that could be cones could be boxes so we use all the basic shapes that we normally draw in but we never apply that knowledge we think we apply it we think that we're doing it because we consider it so basic that of course we know it. Of course I know that that's a sphere, right? Of course in my brain, I'm like, oh, if I go in and divide it, yeah, of course. But how often are we thinking, is this a sphere? 
the eyeball is just a sphere. Well, it's just a sphere, so the little hemispheres are the eye lids. Cool. Done. If you apply the basic understanding of your like drawing that you've learned for years and apply that a sphere, right? And apply just the basic understanding of that. This is just a sphere hemisphere. A hemisphere. And then you just start applying that at a deeper level. You start getting more complex artwork from the simple shape that you already know how to draw. So if you're telling me that you don't know how to draw an eye from the quarter, three quarters, I'm going to tell you to go in and draw spheres and then draw hemispheres on it a million times and then draw eyeballs inside of the hemisphere and then just trace the eyelids a million times. Just do that like a quadrillion times. Just get used to to do that. Right, because that concept of the ball and the sphere and the eyeball, this could be any eyeball. It could be any styling you want. The eyelid is the part that you're stylizing to match your anime. Right? Or any other style that you want to achieve. It's all based on the fact that you're doing a basic shape. You're drawing your little subdivisions. You can draw your eye, whatever styling. You want a star? That's not a star. Look at that's that's a, the star eye. And then whatever you want as your eyelid that goes around your eyeball. This is your eyeball. Your eyelid, a fully open eyelid would go around your eyeball like that. So you wouldn't see a top of it. You wouldn't see a much of your eyelid because it's only there. You're seeing it from the front. You're not seeing eyelid because your eye is open. When you close it, your eyelid is going around your eyeball still, but now it's closed more. So now you see eyelid. This is all based on just basic shapes. But understanding the concept of it actually being, seeing your elements as three dimensional shapes like this, is so important that you should focus on this heavily, heavily, if you do not understand it or you find this hard to do. This is something that should be second nature to you, be able to trace and map the surfaces of elements. So you can draw things on top of elements if needed. You can bring things out of elements as needed. You can expand things, make things bigger, smaller, and then eventually all this turns into characters that you can use. You're essentially sculpting, right? You're sculpting your things out. And when you get to that point where you think like this, when you can see things like this, it becomes, everything becomes so much easier. Like all art becomes easier. Period. All art. Animation becomes easier. Movement becomes easier. Sculpting becomes easier. Drawing becomes easier. Illustrating becomes easier. Painting becomes easier. Lighting becomes easier. Everything becomes easier if you see things like this. So if you don't see things in... Uh, if you are not like absolutely confident that you can just do things in 3D space, even without a perspective point, right? Like just drawing things and making them look properly going forward and backwards on a sphere. If you can do this confidently, then you're ready to go on to the next step. If you can't do something like this, and this is hard for you, this is what you need to practice, okay? It's boring. I guess it's boring to some people. It's not boring to me because I just make it fun. Like if I need to practice stuff like that, I just start drawing like bo bombs or something, right? Like 
I make it in some way or another fun for myself to practice things like this. Giving myself a basic shape and then finding my elements based on going around my shape and finding the front, the back, the top of elements and stuff like that. Keep it simple. If you don't find this easy to do, keep it nice and simple. Start with one sphere with a nice little subdivision. Map one side and then map the other side. As simple as this. That's it. But if, if you can start like this and then do another, but differently, like maybe here and then here. And connect it if you want. Just do that over and over because that skill of being able to do that translates to you being able to draw jaws, faces, ears, hair, everything. Okay, so oh, the saying, Ben Shenshine shared the live. Yay! Oh, thank you. Uh, sh uh, if you guys want to share the live and uh, share this knowledge with other people, that'd be awesome. Um, I don't know how that works, but I do appreciate it. Let's see. Uh, oh, we have comments on YouTube. I thought we weren't going to have many people. Okay, hold on. Caleb Marshall. Yay, thank you for streaming on YouTube as well. Caleb, for, and for everything. He's my... Oh. I'm your father figure. Wow. <laughs> Beautiful feet you draw with. You can see my feet? Great point. I was thinking this last night. Kayla, can we do some body anatomy today? Yeah, we can do some anatomy today. Uh, how do you do clothing? Oh, made it later. So you grab my sketch while I can draw. Woo! -hoo. Okay, so now we are going to see the impact of basic shapes and how we actually apply them to real like body structures and simplified body structures by that. So it'll be easy like structures for you guys to manipulate into different shapes and forms and styles. Right. So we will start with, uh, I wish I had my glove. Uh, something about gloves makes me feel strong. The same thing with like, wrists stuff and like tattoos around my wrist it makes me feel strong so for some reason i feel more confident drawing with my glove on than i do not with that it's like a confident like like thing i guess <laughs> uh okay so let's see if we are going to be thinking of uh circular objects the best object to learn how to simplify is drawing two spheres together creating a little bean bag, right? The little bean bag is just two spheres, which you can just draw the hemispheres for, right? That's everybody can draw a sphere at this point. We're practicing that. So if you can draw one, practice drawing two. If you can draw two, practice drawing three. Overlap them. See how that comes out. Get used to these little overlaps and these little squishy parts that come out from these little drawings of your spheres you can put together. Sometimes they'll just will look wrong, like weird, like this. That's cool. Take note of it. That looks weird. The third circle should not cover all the way across. Awesome. And then fix it. That looks much better. And it doesn't have to be perfect, but you got to get used to these little overlapping lines and seeing how these little overlapping lines look, right? In this case, 
that looks kind of like a finger that could look like a body like bending over grabbing something this could be a like a foot this could be any of those type of shapes that have a bend in it so we're going to take advantage of a lot of the beanbag shape in order to be able to learn how to draw the rest of the body it's going to be our basic shape that we can enlarge we can make small we can make little we can make fat we can make squarish it's going to be such an ingrained part of our drawing that it's going to be a shape that we can easily manipulate. This will eventually turn into elements like your rib cage, your hip bones, and then other elements like your arms, even your fingers are more like bean bags than you think. No bean bag for a hand. So once you master the ability to draw a circle, then you go to drawing a sphere by learning how to subdivide things. You learn to subdivide things by easily doing this. Take any line and then just make your initial division. From here to here, if you cross an X and cut it across, that's going to be half of that. If you go from here to here, or from edge to edge, edge to edge, and cut it in the middle, that's going to be half of that. So you don't even have to use perspective. You literally can just draw the subdivisions, and then if you have an eye here, you have an eye here. That's your three-quarter view faces. That's the most simplistic way to draw a three-quarter view face. So once you learn how to do that and map little subdivisions, then you start using different shapes. You start modifying your sphere into little things like bean bags, or you squish them down to make like little like you start getting used to a complex round shape that's not necessarily just round and spherical. You got to get used to different shapes that are similar to that. So you go from circle to learning how the spheres work to modifying that sphere little by little, pushing it in like ways that maybe might not work, but maybe it will, right? And you little by little start learning how to draw different shapes in three-dimensional space, right? Because these are all going to be based off this sphere. So that's just a rounded sphere that has a little bit of an edge. But that could easily be a nose. A mustache. Right? It could be anything from a body part to a hand to anything. So the step one is learning to visualize them in three-dimensional space, okay? This is how you learn how to do this shit from scratch. <laughs> so once you learn how to do that, once you get to that point, the next step is going to be learning a tiny bit of anatomy, right? You, at this point, once you can do this, you can draw characters really easy and be like, super good with like positioning them and like drawing them and you know giving them like fun things to do and stuff like that right once you learn how to just draw a beanbag with subdivisions you your creativity can go insane and you can do whatever you want like at that point once you visualize it like this it's a lot about imagination at that point but learning some basic structures are going to help you with that so some of the basic structures that I like to do when it comes down to the human body or anything that has a human type of like bipedal like system. Let me make sure that you guys on YouTube and TikTok can see it. Is a body structure that consists of a rib cage and a pelvic bone. That is the struggle of every artist. That is what we all struggle with understanding easily because it's taught in like a quadrillion fucking ways and like each way is like 
requiring you to understand the million other ways to do things to be able to even fucking get it. Okay? So I don't like to teach it like that. I like to teach it in my own style, my own way. Uh, you can make sense of it or not. At that point, it's up to you. But you at least have this knowledge to go off of that you can play off. Now, for me, the entirety of the human system or the human core is very easily broken down into a beanbag. The beanbag is normally going to be a little bit more squared on top and a little bit more flat on the bottom. So it's a little bit more like these shapes, okay? From there, the crevice of this is going to be your rib cage. This is going to be the compression point of your rib cage pressing against your skin. So if you have fat, that's where the fatty tissue goes. Right? If you're somebody that has a little bit more ch like chunk, this is where the rib cage, maybe there's a little bit of underneath the rib cage, but then that's when you have like your love handles and stuff like that. And better bellies. This part is the rib cage. The rib cage is a hard surface. It's a hard bone. It does not flex. It does not move. It just stay static and things move it around it. So this is going to be hard surface number one. Okay. Hard surface number two comes in the form of the, the bone that we have in the bottom of our body. So in this case, it's the pelvic bone. I like to do it very simply by just giving my little bean bags underwear. Like, I, that is actually how I see it. Like, I just give my bean bags underwear. Punching bag, bean bag, name it whatever you want. To me, it's just a cylinder with a compression point. <laughs> you can call it whatever you want, bro. Like, I'm just trying to simplify it as easy as possible. <laughs> like, why? <laughs> Uh, anyways, we have uh, our hip bone that comes in, it's our pelvic bowl. So essentially this bone holds all our organs, okay? Th this has like a bowl thing and then that's all your organs are inside of there. Between your heart surface, which is your rib cage, and your pelvic bone, all your organs are there, like all squishy inside of your muscles and stuff. Okay. So I like to call this the squish zone. So we have our underwear line and then we have our squish zone. Squish zone is where we normally have like the fatty tissue or our abs or. Where did I put the highlighter? So this little squish zone is the area in between the rib cage and the collar and the hip bone. Okay. So what you do from there is if you ever need a person that's more like fit, create a bigger rib cage or a bigger part to your bean bag and then make a smaller bottom part so he does they just look gigantic. Right? Underwear. It's a bean bag. But then you just map out the anatomy real quick. Really quick, too. It's like significantly quick. From there, the next step is to add a little bit more of a definition to the body, right? So from the bottom of the rib cage, to the end, the middle part of your collar or your hip bone. So you have your rib cage from the front with your little divot. And then you have your 
collarbone. A bean bag from the front is just literally an oval, so you can just do an oval. But I like to do a bean bag anyways because it gives you like a little bit of a curve. And it keeps it from being like all staticky and shit. So you have your underwear line. We have our little rib cage part. Now to find the abs is really easy. From whatever gap you want for your like genitals, leave that gap and then connect the bottom of the rib cage to that. Ba -ba. Now you have abs. Belly button falls somewhere within the squished zone. So you can just put the belly button low, high, whatever. Uh, abs are literally just little blocks with their own like subdivision. So if you were like to draw abs, they're little boxes. Like if you draw them like superhero status, just little boxes. And then you just draw another little box like next to it. And then you can give someone like a quadrillion abs if you want to. And they get bigger as they get closer to your rib cage. When they hit your rib cage, they create a crevice and you normally have a little bit of a tiny like gap or it's normally filled with your muscles because you're normally really buff. So if you have abs like that, you have a lot more muscles and your muscles, your pectorals are also just blocks. It's just a box. And the muscles underneath are just the rib cage part, right? This part right here is the muscles that wrap around your rib cage. So have your rib cage and then you have those muscles that just wrap around. Kind of like we wrap around an eyelid again, around the shape, around your body. Then you have your underwear to your bean bag, which gives you your hip bones and the place where your legs come out. So you can make up anatomy by just creating boxes, but as long as you have a basic understanding of the base form underneath, you're going to be okay. It's going to be all right. It's going to look okay. And that's how you like exaggerate and come up with like superheroes that have like quadrillion muscles that don't really even exist. Right? So if you guys are getting something out of this, right? I'm not going to ask for money. Don't worry. I just want you guys to go subscribe to my YouTube channel because that's where I have all the lessons. Every lesson is normally there. So if you guys are getting something out of this today, like go sub it helps me out to get to that like 100,000 subscriber mark and you know to actually be able to do this for a living imagine if i could just do this every day for you guys free of charge and it would actually like be my happy life and you guys would get learn anything you guys want every day how dope would that be right so I don't ask for anything other than your ability to go get knowledge that's already there. You know, normally I get a lot of questions every day. So a lot of the questions are answered in the streams or they're answered in the videos that I've made. So in much more depth than I could ever go in uh, when it comes down to uh, just talking on a stream. So I highly recommend you guys go do that. So if you guys have gotten anything from them, like any of the talks that I ever do, go do that, please. It literally like helps me out intensely and it benefits you a lot too. So just saying. <laughs> don't make more YouTube accounts just to subscribe. I don't want just empty followers that are, if you already follow me once, that's fine. That's all I need is because I want you to get the information. It's not about the subscriber count. I just need to be able to get more people so they and they get more knowledge so they understand it. Uh, can I draw CJ from Santa Andreas? I don't know who CJ is, but we're teaching anatomy today. We're teaching a little bit about body structures and you know how to like learn how to see things like that. Anyway, so we started with a bean bag. 
Then we went to a bean bag with a little bit of anatomy mapped out in the shape of underwear and a rib cage. And then we identified the abs by going down the rib cage, at the bottom of the rib cage to the middle part of our groin. Boom. So that's step one, step two, step three. Uh, Creative Birdie, you have to go now, but I'm looking forward to your lessons. Thank you for this, man. Hey, you're welcome. I hope you actually uh, got something out of it. Uh, oh, yeah. I, well, yeah, it's just ballpoint pen. It's nothing, like, impressive. The, the reason that I do that, too, is so that anybody can draw like this. Right? So you, anyone, anyone out there that can go steal a pen from a bank or, like, a store can draw like this. So that is a big component of what I like to embrace because it's it's very sad for me whenever I see people like not attempt something because they don't have the right equipment. Uh, how do you draw a curvier figure? Glad you asked. We have a root cage. The curviness normally comes from the taper of the squish zone into the hips so if you draw really wide hips or really wide underwear line or really wide bottom part to your beanbag it's going to give you and i'm going to show an extreme example right so you can have a normal person with normal hips even if they're wide at this point, they're a little bit wider than a normal person would have them, but you have wide hips. And then you can have wide hips. Like, it's really a matter of how exaggerated you want to go, but it's very easily changed by just widening your initial shape. Right? And it's very easy to map out body shapes like this. Like, it gives you a very quick and very efficient way to draw bodies that doesn't involve anything. <laughs> like, you can draw any shape. And now, if you apply those same principles, you can have a body really quickly from any shape. Because now, you're going to apply the same concept once you learn how to do this you're going to start modifying the shapes a little bit and you're going to start learning a little bit more of anatomy each time and be able to map things out a little bit more every time that you learn something new because you have your initial dummy, your shape, your dummy shape that you build off of. No, the green Power Ranger, I heard he died. I, huh? No, well, may he rest in peace. A bigger person. So okay, okay, okay. Let me let me explain how easy it is to go from a fit person to a fat person, right? We're gonna start with a basic beanbag shape, right? That's very basic, very easy. We're gonna come up with a rib cage. And we're gonna come up with the underwear line. Now, what you got to understand is that a fat person and a skinny person have the same anatomical structure. The same person can be fat or skinny. So the only thing that changes is the amount of density of tissue before your hard surfaces. Remember, what were your hard surfaces? Your rib cage and your like leg bone. So what you do, if you want to make someone bigger, you add volume to the structure. You add, but you got to learn. This is why we learn anatomy. So we know where to add that fat, where we like would put that stuff. But it's very simple in the way that I explain it because the fat bellies would only come from underneath the rib cage and they would only go normally to where the, your pelvic bone is. But fat tissue drapes, so a lot of the times you're going to have overlapping shapes. 
Again, we practice overlapping shapes by drawing our circles, right? This is what's happening here. We're using the practice that we did to create overlapping shapes over the shapes that we already had. I had tried the bean method last night and surprised myself. Yeah, it's a, good, it's a very fun way to look at things. And then the more chubby they are, the more they're going to have just fatty tissue over, you know, over the, the structure, the base structure. Now, if you wanted to make someone skinny, you do is you tighten everything and you create sharper edges. So you make the muscle fibers show on top of that rib cage. The muscles, they hug the muscle, right? We don't, we start seeing more structures like the hip bone and the little sexy part right here that like guys get, right? Like it's just the hip bone. You're seeing the bump for the hip bone coming up and then you see their abs. So you see a reduction of muscle tissue instead of an addition of muscle tissue, but it's going to the same place. The abs only show whenever you are skinnier. So a show a definition of those ab muscles can show a person being fit. And then when it comes down to the legs, you get a lot less fat tissue because that's normally where a lot of people accumulate their their body like like you know proportions their legs and their hips and their you know areas how would you draw a malnourished person well a malnourished person would be that same structure right the bean bag into the hip bones into the whatever and then you would just draw more of their anatomy like not in like a strength like fibery way you start showing a little bit more of the rib cage instead of muscle right and this is where anatomy is very important because this is where you start noticing that you don't understand anatomy right when somebody like tells you to draw something like this and it's really hard for you to even draw a skeletal system maybe you should think about taking some anatomy classes because that probably means that you don't really understand how anatomy works. If you want to make someone look feeble, you just hug their skin to their skeleton wherever you can. And then they, it's the same features, right? It's the same like body structure features, right? I'm just hugging lines and under, since I know anatomy and I know how things are supposed to kind of go, not saying I'm an expert, but I know enough and I've drawn enough to understand like things like the collarbone and like the scapula part behind your rib cage where you like your arm and your shoulders and everything come out from like those are complex parts that only really like come into play in you know certain things but if you understand the structure underneath it becomes easy as hell this becomes so quick and easy to learn like it just becomes a style choice, right? Once you get that knowledge in, it never leaves. Like it never leaves. Like once you make it click once, it never leaves. So what you gotta do is you gotta practice it and you gotta understand it from like a million different ways until it clicks and then you're set. It's the journey to be able to get there that's normally really goddamn hard because nobody has like a guide. Everybody holds all their information or we like learn the same bullshit information from every single artist that we like encounter because that's how they learned, you know, like we never get to the point where we question what we learn. Like we just keep repeating the same mistakes a lot and then eventually either we get really good at stylizing those mistakes or we realize that we need to change and we actually learn to do that. How do you avoid stiffness in drawings from thinking too much about the anatomy besides doing gestures? Stop trying to draw anatomy from uh, just the base standard. Just draw a random shape and then see if you can fit a body within it. Like it's much fun, much, much more fun to draw things 
exaggerated and like out of proportion and see if you can make them work as opposed to always trying to draw structured and you know always trying to figure out things in a way that doesn't make sense to you right if like i did not learn anatomy through like the books i, I could not understand it I, I just honestly i could not understand the way that they would explain things in books like body proportions to me were so subjective because i kept seeing people in like a million different like body like shapes like especially in america jesus christ you see people that are like insanely different so how can someone just generalize a body shape into like a standard right like oh well the, the standard person is seven feet tall and six feet wide and blah 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 like it's just fucking annoying like and it's the same information that we get from all the how to draw books because those books were probably i don't know like i honestly don't know like i don't want to like talk bad about the people that teach them because teaching is just in general hard and it's just generally like a really tough thing to even want to go into so i commend anybody that has ever taught or try to make a book about how to teach anything that being said though most people learn the same exact way and since so many people learn the same way with like this whole like cylinders and cubes and pew, 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 and my bodies are boxes pew, 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 pew. right like all those like ways of learning are good and efficient but you have to move past that if you want to get better if you want to learn how to do things better you need to move past the initial learning stage. That's like the kitty learning curve, okay? Like, you got to understand that if you're going to be good, if you want to be good at anything, and anything in life, at anything, especially when it comes down to something as specified as art or something like that, you need to, first of all, be very confident in yourself. You need to learn to be confident. And I know that's hard for a lot of people, like, because a lot of people don't see the value in what they do. And that's another thing. You need to understand that you have value. You're 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 like a fucking awesome person for like being able to create things as is. So like take pride in that. And enjoy the journey. Because it's it's never gonna be an easy journey uh, taking this as a career choice. Right, you're gonna like have to learn a lot of things, and you're gonna have to change a lot of like the ways of thinking and stuff like that. And it's gonna be like a a thing that never stops. Like you're always going to have to question things, learn new things, adopt new things, like figure out new ways to like do different things, like learn new tools that comes out in the market, like see what like things like ai art and shit like that are gonna do for us like that's all the stuff that we should be looking into right now and seeing how we can benefit from that because for me for, uh, actually for ai art like my thoughts on that are that it's just another tool and us as creatives have the opportunity to be able to uh to take hold of that in like just like people did with photoshop and people did with every other like new innovation thing that came out. They learned how to do it and create amazing things with it, right? So if we have the computing power to be able to create and generate things that would take us 10 hours before, now we have the capability of doing something that would take us a lifetime incredibly quick. We just need to learn how to adopt that AI to be able to use it as a tool as opposed to seeing it as an opposition, right? Yeah, kick you in the nuts. Pow. Anyways, let's go back to the body type. Uh, it's about journey, not the destination. The thing is, it's about both. It's not either or. You don't have to choose, oh, you have to enjoy the destination or you got to enjoy the journey. Like, everything is your adventure. It's not, like, anybody else's adventure. It's your adventure, right? You get to choose what you want to do with your adventure. 
Now, do you want to make this a horror movie? Do you want to make this a romantic comedy? Like, what do you want to make your story? Can we learn female anatomy? This works for female and male. The only difference is whenever you have a female character as opposed to a male character, you, maybe you want to, like, if, especially if you're doing, like, pin up -y art, you just enhance the hourglass squish zone. So you just bring that squish zone down and bring those hips out. And then the boobs fall somewhere underneath the midpoint of your shape. Again, boobies come in all different shapes and sizes. You just got to remember that it's a shape that's drew, like draping around your rib cage, right? It's around your rib cage. That is the trick to drawing boobs properly, at least like decently is to think of them as 3D shapes with volume, right? And they're on top of another shape with volume. So if you're drawing like gigantic boobs on top of a little rib cage, it would be like this. But that's just ludicrous. Like, unless uh, there's like hentai people there. But yeah, learn, learn what looks appropriate for the drawings that you do. Whatever looks balanced is going to just be better as opposed to just drawing something that you think looks appealing just because it's larger. Ah, smudging all over the place. My glove. Oh, I give my kingdom for my glove. Uh, I clean my hand now. Ah. Do you work well in color or black and white? What is your favorite medium to work in? You're seeing it. You're seeing my favorite medium to work in. I like working in pen and I like working with highlighter or watercolor. Uh, highlighters and watercolors are just, to me, will always be like, like the most fun thing to play with, especially with pen. Because you can just take any random dollar store palette like such, ba -ba, throw a bunch of water, in one of those little thingies, just saturate it, and then just add a little color to enhance your doodles. Right? It does not take much to make something a cool focal point in a page or, you know, like overly enhance a part of the drawing that you think was important. So learning like to contrast your artwork can help you map out your like learnings and lessons a little bit better. Right. And also learning about contrast is very important. Like it just it's just never taught. Like no one teaches contrast and how important contrast is. Like it's like it's applied in so many different factors like color and light and shadows and line work and shape dynamics and everything like that but nobody ever talks about it or teaches it it's just really weird like nobody sees it as a fundamental and it's a fucking of course it's a fundamental like learning contrasts like in general oh it's so important to making any sort of artwork look decent like from like okay you guys might understand that uh, concept of contrast as a uh, thick to thin or uh, straight versus uh, sh uh, angled or all like contrapasta all those things that you guys have probably learned it's just under the concept of contrast because it's just literally dynamic shapes changing shape from one side to the other that is what you're learning it's just not labeled as that it's like naming like um it's like going and saying like oh i'm gonna learn how to draw buildings oh but it's not perspective no it's if you learn how to draw buildings you're learning perspective 
that's the it's the same type of notion like it's just ugh. nobody ever teaches it i'm trying to come up with lessons for it but it, like it's it's a tough topic to teach like it's just it's a very broad like thing and it needs for people to understand a lot of concepts when it comes down to color and line weight and stuff like that so it's a uh, but it's something that i want to tackle like it, i'm excited to try to tackle on the, the the topic and like actually make a really cool lesson that a lot of people can benefit from what marker are you using uh, i'm not drawing with a marker i'm using a cheap brush pen like the ones from the dollar store and i'm using a dollar store uh palette so uh, nothing special i'm literally just doing it just so i can highlight the little parts of the drawings that i like and to highlight the lesson plan more than anything rib cage beanbag body shapes so the reason that you start with a beanbag is just to transition from the uh, the concept of drawing in basic shapes to transition that into learning a little bit of anatomy. Now, once you actually learn how to draw something like a beanbag, now you can start having more fun because now you can start separating the two elements a little bit more. Now you can start making a rib cage a different shape completely than let's say your, your torso or your like hip bones, but you understand the concept of the hip bone being a shape that has something coming out at an angle, right? That's the purpose of learning how to draw the underwear. And so you understand this gap that happens right there. So the gap that happens on the side, our legs don't come out from the bottom of our legs at a flat angle. Like they don't come out like this out of our body, like a robot, right? They don't do that. They do this. Our legs come in and they call this the hip bone. Like they make that shape as a hip bone in lessons because it's just literally replicating the hip bone, guys. That's the reason they do it for the angle. So they can get that angle. That's the important part of drawing the hip like that. Okay. So now once you understand how to draw something as basic as a rib cage, now you can start playing around with different shapes. And different shapes give you different looks. And different looks give you different styles. But they're all based off the same concept of having that structure, subdividing it, and figuring out the basic parts of anatomy. And understanding the basic things like the muscles and the you know little things that overlap the hard surfaces that create the elements like little bumps for your hips the hip bone area inside creates the little divots inside of your stomach okay that leads to your groin area so your groin area is going to have your underwear and even if it doesn't follow exactly the sketch, if you see that it looks better like later, just but you know that knowledge is there, right? You can start stylizing it like crazy. You can start, you know, mapping out the surfaces of the legs. But it comes from a more accurate place. The abs, again, from the bottom. You can add little like things like your ab muscles going in. And at this point, it's just style choice. Honestly, at this point, you can just do whatever you want. But you under if you understand the concept underneath it, it's going to be a lot easier for you to draw whatever you want on top of your object. And if you see things in 3D like you should because we practice your basic shapes, right? You're not drawing just random circles and stuff anymore, right? Yeah. We're not. We're thinking of everything as an element in space. The angles, honestly, it doesn't matter. The angle does not matter. You can draw this in any angle you want, and it applies. From the back, you can also draw the same thing. Right? You have your rib cage. The back of your rib cage also has a divot. The back of your hip bone has a little divot, too. And in this case, instead of abs, 
you just have your back muscles. Hip bone, rib cage. You already drew it. All you got to do is draw the bumps. And then the butt muscles get applied to the back of the actual hip bone. And -da. You can start drawing. With the understanding of those basic shapes, you can draw any position, any shape you want. If any proportions, any, like as long as you understand what's supposed to be there, you can draw anything and it'll look okay. Okay. <laughs> you can draw anything as long as you draw them placed right, it's going to look decent. Now getting good and like more accurate after that, that's like another story. But again, if you want to find the ear, you go around the shape to the back and the ear would be right there. If I want to find the jaw, Take the bottom of the ear, bottom of the ear, and then I just connect them to the front. You want to know where the eye is supposed to go? Cool. I know that my ear is here. I know that my temple incorporates a little bit of space between your ear and your eye, so my eye can be anywhere past here. My nose is just a shape that's in front of my face. I can't really see the front of my face, but I probably, if I drew through it, I'd probably see the other side of my face here, which means the middle is right there, which means that my nose would come out right there. It's all about understanding and being able to map things out from the front and the back, the side, front, and being able to understand your basic shapes that we learned with at first, right? At the beginning of the lesson, we talked about how we like learn and draw these shapes. Well, then we apply that same knowledge to a more complex shape, like a face. It's going to take a while and it's not going to be instant. But once you start seeing things through things like the jaw become a lot easier. The neck becomes a lot easier too. And elements like mapping out your shapes and stuff like that just becomes easier because you learn how to cut things out, you learn how to add things in, and it's just going to help you see things in a deeper level. And if you can't get there yet, and if you haven't gotten there to the point where you can understand this yet, come back to it in 10 months. Come back to it in a couple months. Practice your shapes over and over, and then come back to this, and then see if you understand it then. Right? Because all the lessons that you learn today, uh, if you revisit them in five, six years, when you like are more established, you will understand more of what that person was teaching. So for now, like we have talked about just seeing your basic shapes and translating that to more of your like actual drawings. Uh, do you have any tips or how to draw arms? Yeah, let's do arms. So arms are going to work like this. Uh, AI can generate some funny images, <laughs> probably. Uh, Chris Cook, late to the party again. What have I missed? It will be on the test. <laughs> We've been drawing a lot of just uh, anatomy and body structures and showing you guys how to build it from like straight up like a circle, like how to learn how to draw a circle all the way to how to draw a structure like this. So this is essentially how to visualize body structures and uh, a very like important foundations course all in one. So go watch it later on on YouTube. And uh, if you haven't caught it from the beginning, I, I highly recommend it. If you if you were seeing that you're understanding something, watch it from the beginning. I think you'll get a lot from it. Uh, yeah, I use watercolor for the color. Um, okay, arms. Arms and legs are very similar. Arms and legs are incredibly similar. And I'm going to show you guys how you guys can approach each one. Arms start off by we'll draw a body structure so rib cage bean bag into underwear 
Okay, so our bodies and our arms, they connect differently to the body, right? Our arms connect at the shoulder point, which comes from our collarbone. Our collarbone is easy to identify by just bringing a line from that middle divot that we draw, a little line, so it doesn't matter if it's like this way or that way or this way. Just bring a little line up, okay? You bring that line up and then you connect it to the sides of your body, the side of your ribcage. From this side, the ribcage here, so it wraps around. Yeah. That's your collarbone. So, if that's your collarbone, what does the collarbone do? So, the collarbone is at the top of the rib cage and it connects your literally like your your rib cage to your arms. And the shoulder connects at this little pivot point that we drew in the middle of the side of the body and it connects from the front and from the back in a little heart shape like this. The front part ends up about a third of the way in from the collarbone so you end up with a shape like this. The shoulder, if you move up your shoulder, your collarbone moves up. If you move your collar, your shoulders down, your collarbone goes flat. But your collarbone cannot go down. So it can only go flat if you have like a nice rigid body, or it can go up if you have your shoulder shrugged or you have your shoulder up. And it pivots from about a third or about halfway in from your collarbone. So from right here, one, two. From right here, front, back. Okay, so that is how the shoulder connects to our body. Now, underneath the rib cage, underneath the shoulder comes our pectoral muscle. Our pectoral muscle is going to be connecting to our armpit, which is just underneath our shoulder. So that's going to connect to whatever point in the rib that you want to connect it to. If you want to have really like little like like breasts, uh, like, you know, tissue, bring it up here and then make the person skinny. If you want to make them like buff, make it here. If you don't want to add any definition, you don't have to. You just have to understand that it's coming from there. So you can just literally do that. Do you have videos explaining that for saving? Uh, you can just go on my YouTube uh, this will be on YouTube. It's streaming on YouTube at the same time. So all this information, all these streams get normally saved and uh, there's a big gallery of them already. So you guys can go check it out on YouTube. Uh, and I talk about a lot more than just this. It's just like, like I've been loving doing lessons. So yeah, Addison, you're welcome. Um, okay, so our shoulder, when we move our shoulder up, our collarbone goes up. When our shoulders go down or even it can be flat underneath our rib cage or underneath our shoulder where our like armpit would be that's where our pecs or our breasts or whatever you want come from but they come from that area right boobies tend to have like you know like a draping sagging whatever uh, what is your YouTube link on your TikTok? Uh, it should be. Yes, yeah, so just go to my profile and you guys will see the, the link to all my stuff. Um, once you have your pectoral muscle, then you can draw your bicep. Your bicep comes from underneath your shoulder and your pectoral muscle. This crevice right here, this little like intersection, normally does not look that defined and it ends up looking more like this. Right? You end up with something more like that. Um, it should be under the tag. Uh, <laughs> otherwise, just uh, search for my name on YouTube. It's uh, Rodgon the Artist. I should be the only person that pops up with that. So now that we have 
the arm such as our cylinder right it's just a basic cylinder coming out of the bottom of our pectoral muscle and our shoulder then we got to ask ourselves how far down the body is going to be this arm like how long is this section because i know that's a hard question right that's like something that we ask ourselves a lot well i like to normally map it out to where the bicep is roughly at the bottom of the rib cage so since you already drew your rib cage now you know where the first part of your body is supposed to go because all you gotta do is just rotate around that. Right? You can only go this far with your arm. How do you find your style? I have many. Okay, well, your style comes, well, then you have a bunch of tools in your arsenal. Like, why are you trying to just, like, narrow yourself down to one when you have many? Like, you have many. Like, you know how hard it is to come up with one? And you have many styles and you're trying to, like, think of that as a negative? Holy shit, dude. That, there's something wacky about you. <laughs> I love you. No, I love all you guys. But sometimes you guys uh, say some funny things, man. Uh, okay, hold on. We'll we'll talk about this. Uh, so now that we have our, ri our our body, we have the understanding of the rib cage going to where your bicep is supposed to be, right? Then the forearm connects at the top before your bicep. Like it, it starts right here. The way that I like to explain it is if you take your bicep and you extend it that gives you the perfect roundness for your forearm. Take your bicep, extend it a little bit. It gives you that little like empty space you have after your bicep and then just draw around your bicep. And you get that like, you get that like proportions perfectly. But you gotta realize that it's not here. You don't do it at the end. You do have to overlap them a little bit. If you overlap it a little bit, it's a lot easier to draw that shape. Imagine like the, the halo sword or something. No, the thing is, once you understand this way of thinking, styles become just another way of rendering. The styles just become another thing like line work or color. You can draw any style you want on top of this stuff. This is more so imagine you're like building like your own dummy system inside of your brain that allows you to take any drawing, any like quick drawing, and then translate that to many different styles without requiring you to change the way that you think about your drawing. Right? That is... The goal, like if you wanted a pin up, you can draw a pin up. If you wanted like a super cartoony character, you can have a super cartoony character. If you want a super wacky one, you can have that too. It's all based on understanding the shapes and then seeing that. Now, the other thing about arms, right? Let's do finish arms. The other distance that you have, it's from here to here, we measure to the rib cage. Now, from here to the wrist, from your forearm or your elbow to your wrist is going to be the same distance but you have to consider the overlap if you don't consider this little overlap it's gonna look weird okay so you take that into consideration you go bicep overlap same distance boom boom you get that right so now you have your bicep and you have your forearm your forearm the things that's going on in your forearm is you have two bones and then you have muscle that wraps around your bones, right? That's what your forearm is going on. That's what's going on in your forearm. So that's why you create this shape that has like this little like weird like, you know, chicken leg type of feel where it's like flatter on the bottom and it's more like meaty at the top. That's what's happening right here, right? It's just wrapping around. So your bicep 
and your extended part of your bicep end up being those muscle tissues that like come up and stuff. And then the hand goes on top of that. But the hand doesn't just connect, again, like a little box on top of it. Your hand, and we talked about hands a lot like a couple of days ago. So if you guys want to learn about hands and how to draw hands, uh, go watch that like 100 hand challenge. Like I explained everything about hands. So your hand connects at a cylindrical shape. And then it has like this little area that nobody draws. And what I like to call it is like the scarf or like the little like suspension part of the hand. It's this little part right here. This little tiny section that has so much flexibility and squish. So if you just draw that with your hands, your hands become so much more appealing. Because you can change directions. You can do like really fun, quick, dynamic changes to them. And... It looks really cool, right? Because that's what it actually happens there. Like you don't draw those lines, of course. You, like, but you, if you think about it with it in there, your hands just become much more flexible, and you understand how the skin kind of like bends and stuff. Okay. So that's one thing that you can keep in mind whenever you're doing that, whenever you're drawing hands. Uh, hands, again, I cannot explain it better than I did in that stream. Please just go watch it. Uh, I explain everything from fingers to basic shapes to how to visualize it to how wide. And like, do you, under, do you guys know that your hand is only as wide as your knuckle and how easy it is to just draw like a knuckle? Like, draw your knuckle, like a knuckle, and now I have the top and the bottom of my hand. Right? I know two knuckles on one side, one knuckle on the other. So now I have my bottom with all my bumps, because these bumps are literally just the bottom of my knuckle. I have my top bumps, because that's the top of my knuckles. And then your fingers just extend from there, however you want. Yeah, it's a super exaggerated, like, you know, way of seeing it. But go see that video. Like, you, you guys will be like, if you guys actually enjoy this, then you guys are having, like, there's like 200 of you guys on the stream right now. So I'm guessing you guys are enjoying this. So if you guys go and watch that video, you guys will see how easy it is to draw hands. Like, so easy. And being like very expressive with hands is very important when it comes down to like certain animation, like like places, you know. Oh shit, I can't see it. Um, bye, Rodgon. Hey, bye. Uh, Chris Cook, Emily, it's yeah, really cheap. Come in a multicolor pack as well. Okay. Okay, Ashley Petit, what anatomy online class do you recommend? I would recommend Proco. Uh, the Proco uh, anatomy courses are just, like, I, I learned so much so quickly. Uh, I didn't take an entire course. I literally just watched the stuff online uh, and, like, YouTube and stuff. But, like, that's how I learned the underside of the, the, like, the head. Like, I learned how to draw this underside by analyzing what uh, the people at Proco did and how, like, to visualize it better. Bro, that scribbled hand is what? Is better than any of the ones I've ever drawn. Well, maybe not anymore after you finish uh you know listening to what I teach you and then you know like apply it. I have a feeling that a lot of you guys if you if anything has clicked for you, if anything has like made sense or like clicked, just subscribe to my channel. Uh I throw out this information all the time like i do this constantly uh i like teaching i like helping people and i like making sure that the people that follow me receive good quality information and i'm here to help so 
I learned very early in life that I had a calling, and that calling was not to be the best artist, but it was to explain shit in a very different way so that people don't quit art. Like, if you teach a fish, if you try to teach a fish how to climb a tree, he'll always feel like he's dumb. I, I have that, like, in my heart. Like, I think of that constantly. Like, how everybody gets taught the same way and everybody's expected to have the same result. Right? Everybody's meant to, like, you know, end up in the same level of awesomeness that, you know, somebody else qualified as awesome. And, you know, uniqueness is really, like, underrated when it comes down to anything nowadays. So, you know... I'm going to be here. I'm going to be like uh, the voice of reason here and tell you guys, be original. Don't be cookie cutter. Do what you want, not what you're expected to do. Right? That is how you're going to have a long and happy career. Find a way to make money with the things that you love about art because we should not be compromising with what we love right if you hate your job and you do not like your job find an exit plan that involves you already having a job and a something better work your weekends so that you can build the life that you want downgrade your life for a year and be working towards the goals you want so you can live the life you want forever not just look for the weekend to work on your shit, right? The big difference between people that make it in the art world and people that don't consists a lot of luck. People don't want to hear it. Don't people want to say it, but it's fucking luck, okay? A lot of it is luck. Half the time when I hear people talk about their success stories, like I straight up stop listening because they go, oh, well, then I got lucky. And I'm like, yeah, okay, never mind. Like, literally, like, whatever you say next is irrelevant. Because, look, if if you're giving a success story and you're trying to tell people and inspire people, telling them something came from luck is, like, the most devastating thing you can do. Because then that just means that what you did is very not achievable, not able to be achieved unless you get that lucky streak. So that is something that I don't like doing. That's why I don't draw with expensive shit. That's why I make sure that people receive information for free. And that's why, you know, I'm going to aim to do that for as many people as I can. And if it comes with money, if I actually make money fantastic, I'll just do it more. <laughs> and if it doesn't, you know, at least I, I contributed to the next generation and maybe, like, helped out some of the old-timers as well. Emily on it's, hey, Rod, will you be taking part in the Illustrated World event on the 16th? And oh, I am going to be in the World Illustration Championships! Yeah, boy! They, I got invited for the second time after being a semi-finalist in the first time around. I got invited to be part in this January, uh, December, um, yeah, Illustration Championships, the UK Illustration Championships. And I cannot wait. It's going to be awesome. I'm going to bring, like this, last time, last time, I honestly think I lost out of a technicality. Mostly because I did not draw in graffiti, like, art style. So... Like, it was more based on, like, the style choices than the actual, like, this, like, you know, complexity of the art. So now that I know that, now that I know that, and I know the rules, woo, boy, is everyone in trouble. Is everyone in freaking trouble. Oh. Hey, Rod, how's your theme song coming along? Sabrina, okay, okay, you gotta, like, hum it. You gotta, like, send me, like, a little jingle of how you envision what you wrote like coming out that would be awesome okay and then like if it if you sing it i'll just use that as the theme song for a while <laughs> until we come up with like a new one <laughs> that'd be funny 
that'd be really cool. I have my friend Kit from Scotland working on my actual theme song for my channel, but that would be like a cool little jingle that we can share with like like people in the cult of imagination. Oh my god, that's what I should call my like my like my people, the cult of imagination. <laughs> That'd be really funny. See, for example, when you're drawing hands like this, right? Normally, it becomes hard to come up with these positions because it normally, like, you're trying to put a ball in a box together. But if you have that little sound that's like a suspension or something, like a scarf, it just becomes a lot easier to draw. And it even looks like he's bending his wrist more like what? Okay, so we're almost done with our page. Uh, we actually drew one and a half pages today, and we have been on the stream for over two hours, I think. So we are going to call it a day. We are going to finish coloring this in so I don't have to do it later because procrastination is and will forever be an artist's biggest enemy. So whenever you can finish something, finish it. <laughs> so I'm going to add a little color. I'm going to take this time to thank all of you for being on the stream. I'm going to also do the whole like pitch thing, you know, in case you guys do want to help and support the cause. There is books and ebooks and printed books that you guys can purchase through my store. The store link is on my Instagram. Unfortunately, I don't think the one in TikTok ever works, so I stopped using it. But if you guys do want to support, I have Coffee Break Doodles, which is a collection of doodles that I've done over the years, and also Pinups, a collection of beautiful ladies that is going to help me get that book printed. Right? Those are that's like essentially think of it as a Kickstarter where you get to see a preview of the book. The book itself right now is 60 pages full of pinups, but the actual book that I want printed is gonna be over 160 pages of awesome, beautiful pinups. So I want this to be my masterpiece. Like I straight up wanna have somebody see this book, see it at the store, see it at like whatever convention and be like, holy shit, I need that. I need to purchase that motherfucking book and have it in my damn store. <laughs> at my bookcase. <laughs> That is my goal. That is going to be what uh, pinups is going to be when I actually get it printed. And the ebooks that you guys purchase is going to always just go to merchandise and things that I need to get done project wise. I don't pay myself a salary. <laughs> I don't. Uh, I, I make my money in whatever way I need with freelancing and stuff like that. And then I don't. I use everything that I receive from you guys as like diamonds and donations as ways to improve my equipment so that I can teach better. Right? So I'm seeing it as a business as well. It's more like I want to just be a teacher. <laughs> so I'm going to find ways to fund that. And thanks to donations from you guys, that's how it works. So thank you so much. You guys are awesome. Uh, hope you guys have a fantastic Sunday. You guys, uh, the spin-up book have the rough scratches on it to use for reference. Uh, I don't know. They don't, but it's a PDF. So you can always go and, like, if you have an iPad, you can always take the PDF, open a PDF, ghost an image, and then draw over it. Ta-da! You know, I've always, I've been, like, fishing out for, like, job positions in art schools. Um, I want to teach at a college level. I think I think at that level I can actually make a big difference in people's lives. Um, unfortunately, in California, I can't teach because I don't have a master's degree, and you know, well, the education here is really expensive, so I haven't been able to pursue that. But I'm gonna be moving to Scotland in February, so I'm going to be looking to see if I can actually take a master's degree there, and you know just get it done so I can be master of arts master of arts rod how fucking dope would that be like how fucking awesome would that be <laughs> master rod <laughs> nice to meet you and that's also my porn name I guess 
<laughs> All right, everybody. Have a wonderful, wonderful day. Hope you guys have a fantastic evening. Please, if you guys have not uh, joined and followed and subscribed and clicked like and all that crap, uh, just do that. So that way you guys can help me out, help you guys out, okay? Have a wonderful day. I'm going to go play some pool with some friends and finish up this 21 draw course because it's kicking my ass. Uh, but anyways, I'll see you guys later. Have a wonderful day. Sabrina, thank you so much for the jingle and reminder. And I will talk to you guys later. Peace.